This is this is the McKee Road Center, and this is where uh, Capital Pumice and Cars used to be back in the day in the 80s and 90s. And it's now dead. That's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, Togo's is still here. And the Toys R Us is way gone, but it's over there. Yeah, so the Ross Dress for Less over there is where the Toys R Us used to be. Down there, the Toys R Us. And then the mall's like this, and then over there. And the Target used to be Wards. <laughs> Well, the, there's these old walkers. Actually, used them. So many years ago, we had uh, set up PVC pipes to all over the early set in the in the during production, and and then we used uh, wall boards and space sets and things in the production, and uh, we didn't really need to. We had we had these walkers in the garage. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, can use these to foist wall boards up on by weighting them down. Uh, wall boards on either side of this. This is not where this would be if we were doing episode filming. This table would be on the space backdrop. There would be black up the sides. Space backdrop. It wouldn't be in this, this room. Uh, and then there would be... This would probably be about this far away. Maybe maybe turned this way. Because it's holding up the set. Space set would go up here. The continuum would well, they're action figures, so they're this high, and they would uh, be in this ethereal thing, light, light the underside. Yeah, so, so pretty much that's kind of what I'm sussing out here. Figure out what this is going to be. It isn't anything yet, but this is what it's kind of going to be. Uh, yeah, so uh, not in here, of course. This is, uh, yeah, you turn it around and. Uh, Show me, I guess. Uh, this is, uh, mm. it is the fort, uh, what is it? Hey, <laughs> May 17th, uh, 2019. The, uh, the, I'm on the, uh, the bridge of the, the, uh, starship, uh, Josh Braun back in Starcracker days. I'm on the bridge. Uh, it's not, it's actually a living room set somewhere in the Bay Area. Uh, this is the same one as the Cal Cat show, uh, and uh, for for, for all, all the seasons that we use the room, uh, the kitchen is the kitchen from the, the show. Uh, the, yeah, it's uh, this dining room. It's the same same place. Uh, the um, so we have uh, here we have from the the living room. Uh, we wouldn't use the living room in the production. Uh, the everything is too actually too far away. Uh, but this is for Star Trek Chimera or Starship Chimera. Uh, we got this coffee table, which is uh, from a from a lot sale. It was it was one of the free donations from Christ Community Church of Milpitas toward the end of the lot sale. Uh, we gave them other stuff to get bags and props and things, uh, uh, some of which will be used in uh, in the Fanime story where we go to the where I go to the. Teddy Ruxpin thing with, with silly, as silly Kelly. Um, the um, okay. so this is this is uh, sussing out kind of vaguely what uh, what we could do with this ethereal looking trippy coffee table and uh, trying to figure it out. I, I gave a, a sneak preview of it. Uh, preview, a sneak preview of it last uh, weekend, and uh, now it's Thursday. Uh, Mark's cars is not. Is not in town, but uh, he's in Reno. But the um, here we have the 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 set. Uh, what will be the uh, 
part of the Q continuum. It'll be the uh, glass bottom floor that he was thinking of. He probably had a coffee table similar to this, and I thinking, can we light the coffee table? So, have a coffee table. Uh, we would put up space set sides and, and disguise the fact that it's a coffee table, and light it underneath and above, and we have sort of this glowing ethereal kind of um, uh, revelation type weird, you know, sea of glass kind of thing going on. Um, it'll look really cool, uh, that, but here, I'm just uh, proof of concept showing what's going on here, and you have these little walkers uh, it could be used as basically to hold the parts of the setup that would normally fall over. Um, uh, yeah, in the early days of Chimera in 2010 and 2011, uh, was footage, most, most of the footage of which we did not use, we reshot. Uh, we had uh, used elaborate PVC pipe setup thing that was way more expensive than it should have been. Uh, to hold up part of the set. Um, and then we created these sort of post trans tech uh, set piece uh, things, used about 20% of the original footage and rebuilt everything else. Uh, to, to be the Star Trek sets, they're still in there. They're still, well, they're kind of messed up, but I think for the last 22 minutes of filming of the movie, we should be able to use them without having to re redo them completely or anything. Get them, you reuse them uh, since since the last parts of the movie are about are about you know it's just kind of devastated anyway. Well, well, the the good pieces are not devastated. It's just that there's a lot of a lot of the larger pieces that are kind of a mess. It wasn't it just age; they've been sitting around. Um, the figures may have dust on them. Let's we'll take that off. Uh, the uh, yeah, it's been two a little over two years, almost three. Uh, since any filming was done, um, uh, I would actually it's probably just about three. Uh, the uh, over three, actually. Now that I think about it, 2016 was when we recovered the computer. Uh, got another one. Uh, found the footage. There was only one copy of our footage that was shot from 2012 to 2016 that survived. 2012 to 2014 that survived. Uh, it was on a disc. It was uh, raw footage. It was also on a laptop. So we were able to download that raw footage, which is 1080p. Uh, and now we have to match that older footage with uh, any newer footage we shoot, like this footage. This is going to be MP4 1080p as well, but it'll be like MP4. I think that other one was AV AVI or AVC. It's, the quality is going to be a little sharper in the last 20 minutes, just because it's a little better quality. Uh, the uh, MP4 is better than AVI. Uh, so so, but, but that's fine. I um, <laughs> uh, just have to hide the flaws better if there's, you know, make sure there's no cat hairs because you'll be able to see them. Uh, the footage that was reshot of the last scene, which was, I believe, parts of the planet set uh, and, and Crass and Mahoney, the planet, was reshot in 2016, was, uh, 23 years ago, was, um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the last of that was uh, the newer footage of that looks so much better than the older footage. You can actually decidable difference. So we kind of had to roll back some of it a little bit in post. Uh, yeah, the like like certain lighting and stuff was a little different. So the Klingon guy comes out. Ah, the lighting was a little bluer than the lighting in the thing. So we we fixed that, or I fixed that. Uh, the the uh, although he does look quite a bit sharper. Uh, the, the footage, the reshot footage of the androids uh, freaking out over the planet falling apart. Uh, that was uh, adding the McCoy robot saying the other line is clearer footage than the other footage. If we know that, um, uh, it just is because it's a newer camera. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it's like if we had filmed the whole, you know, thing back in the day for uh, the whole, yeah, if we had... If we had shot it all in the course of 2015, 2016 and finished it, it would have been finished by the third, 40th anniversary of Star Trek uh, and, uh, and then had the footage left behind. It would, it would have been different because we should just put in the effects. Uh, that's not what happened. Um, the, uh, the effect, some of the effects were lost. Uh, there other things happened. We were able to, though, procure the uh, Klingon Bird of Prey model from the select toys through a through a vendor. Um, so we got a Klingon Bird of Prey model. It looks better than the uh, 
one that Tim and I put together. <laughs> I painted. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I put that up there because that model is breaking constantly. Um, so an actual real like plastic model, and it shouldn't matter because they're plastic figures. Uh, yeah, and uh, t and apparently, um, yeah. So fans are probably going to ask, so does it have anything to do with the Picard series? No, no, it doesn't. Um, our version uh, would predate the Picard series by about five years. Uh, the Chimera is set in 2388. Uh, that's when it still is. That's what it was at 2388. Uh, if you if you add up what that would be now in May of now, uh, it would be late late November or mid November of 2396. This is where we are now. So six years later. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Or eight years later, uh, 88, yeah, eight years later. So it's quite a bit later uh, at this point. So so even though the story is kind of matching up with the other one, you know, so what would we do any kind of a, a thing? I guess we'd have to have a, <laughs> or is it, yeah, is it, what, uh, yeah, because it's 99, yeah. It would be the second season of, if you were going back 30 years, it would be the second season of, early third season of TNG right now. End of the second, early third season. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it'd be the end of the second season of TNG. That awful Shades of Grey episode. Having nothing to do with 50 Shades of Grey. The awful Shades of Grey episode. So that would be out now. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, so back in uh, 89 in May. Uh, yeah, uh, 30 years ago. Um, yeah, so we have this... Uh, yeah, so it'd be it'd be twenty three ninety five ninety six or approaching twenty three ninety six. So it'd be November twenty three ninety five. That's right. So it's seven seven years later. Uh, so I wonder what 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 happened with um, some of those characters after all that time twenty three eighty eight to twenty three ninety five. Yeah, twenty three eighty eight to twenty three ninety eight. But three years, yeah, seven. seven. Um, so yeah, the. Uh, I guess the new Picard series takes place a little later. Uh, it looks like from the leaked photos that it's just around during the uh, Star uh, Star Trek Online series, which is later than ours. Um, it's interesting. Um, maybe it's somewhere in the 2390s. That would be nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, uh, it um, has nothing to do with us. We weren't asked. Um, the, uh, but the uniforms are very similar to the uniforms... Yet another Star Trek thing copying. Uh, the uniforms are very similar to the 2011 uniforms from the lost footage. First 40 minutes of the movie that we did actually shoot back then, but was the wrong aspect ratio. And an older camera. And it did. We have that footage, a lot of that footage, on it on one of those discs that was saved. Uh, we'll, of course, put that up as a bonus feature on the when we air the video. Uh, Mark's cards assures me that... Um, it's going to be in 2019. It's going to be finished this year. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it would be awesome to say by September 8th that it's done and we're going to show you a trailer. And and that would be awesome. Uh, we're in May now. It could happen. Uh, it would be great to have a Valentine to the fans and all that stuff special thing. Uh, do some other things. Uh, also, there's Transformers being broke tech. So this is not... This is not what it's going to look like. This is just proof of concept stuff. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I mean, I'm just showing you props, basically. 13 minutes of props. Um, addressing all of the uh, speculation that, of our 60 or so subscribers on the Trek Core site. And that is the Purr Beast. The Purr Beast. Remember the Purr Beast? Although the Purr Beast was not the star of the Lego Ninjago movie, they watched our film and they put a Purr Beast in the Lego Ninjago movie. Here is the Purr Beast. Hello, Purr Beast. How big this kitty is, yes. This is that little kitten from 2014. The size of this thing. He's huge. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. 
Yeah, it's Houdini Kitty. It's the Par Beast. His magical cuteness will save us all. A Par Beast. Anyway. <laughs>